Good evening. Welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we're on Blackberry Smokes. Paul Jackson, how are you? Hey, how you doing, man? Doing good. You doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm glad we could talk. I've been a big fan of your, your, your playing and your sound for years. Um, oh, thank you. Well, I mean, anybody who's heard the band knows it's like, it's like, before we get into it, I just want to tell you, the sound of, of Blackberry Smoke is kind of like what you, when you start off in music and you go, I love all this music and I want to put it together, but I want to sound original. And that's what I got right. to hear with every song. Like I hear it, I'm like, I can hear it's, it's, different uh, styles of music, but it's totally original, which is like a, right. a home run for a musician to be able to do, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, the four of us got together, the initial four of us got together and it just, it worked. Just, I mean, it wasn't something that we tried to do. It just happened. You know, it just doesn't always happen. And to me, that's the, yeah, yeah. To, to me, that's, that's one of the beauties of it. It just, it just came out of us all together. Just, wow. It, I, just, I knew immediately, you know, I was like, well, yeah. the, this is good. This is, if, if, if we're not going to go, crazy far we're gonna go somewhere quick yeah because i just i just knew it just felt right it felt right immediately it's you crazy because like when i heard you guys and, and in the beginning and i'm like man i just you guys sound you had a sound but you sounded like a familiar sound like like season like you guys been doing this forever like i grew up listening to you guys the band itself i mean you recognized right out of the gate it was it was lightning in a bottle i mean it sounds cliche but if you've been in enough bands, it does. i'm not talking like you can be in a band as big as yours or you can be in a garage band when you're jamming with your buddy and you're it, like, oh, oh, it's magic. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just worked. I, and the funny thing is, is I, I knew Charlie for ye years before we got to get, decided to get together and play. And I was like, really? man, I, we could have done this 15 years ago. I just, yeah, I had my own thing going and so did he. And then he met up with Britt and Richard and they were doing their thing with a, um, there was this artist, and they decided to go play with him, and they formed a a small band, and then that band disbanded, and they got back together, and uh, they actually had um another guitar player, but he didn't work out. Like I think for a month they had him and need to work out, and I told Charlie if he ever needed a guitar player. Let me know. Um, I got dibs, <laughs> and he goes, "It's funny you should say. It's funny you should say that because we definitely need another guitar player. That dude's not going to be with us. Um, he's a wonderful guy. I like him. I like him a lot too. Um, but just chemistry, and, uh, it's just, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I went rehearsed with Charlie, Britt, and Richard, and that's when Blackberry Smoke was formed. Just like like that. It's it's a great sound. It really is. It's like and it's funny, yeah. if you actually look back, you think about a lot, of, a lot of our favorite rock bands growing up, even like your Zeppelins and your whatever bands, they are actually all, you know, they were this band and they were the Yardbirds and they were this. It's like, like a bunch of other other yeah. bands, artists actually go, hey, hey, we should do something together. Yeah. It's like, and then they quit their other bands and they, they all find that project, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Is there anybody that favors yes, that's rock it. in the band? But is there anybody in the band that favors rock more than the others? Because it feels to me, it feels very even in the songs. So it feels like the songwriting, like everyone has it, it all these influences. Not like one person's an ACDC fan, or you know what I'm saying? Like it feels like everybody's we, got a love. We all listen. Yeah, we all listen to different styles of music, and but we do all like basically the same thing. You know, it's the the, the difference. You know, it's very not different, I guess, but it's like, like I grew up listening to obviously Skinner, but 38 Special more. And then Charlie may have grown up and listened to Skinner more than 38 Special, if that makes any right. sense. It does. Yeah, that kind oh. of, same kind of, little, same kind of vibe. More, right. A little, I think a little more Southern, sweatier in the Skinner side and. 30 special has some man, they got the southern people, they got some great pop songs, man. They could just melt yeah. those melodies. Like it's in your head yeah. for like three days. It's like a songworm. Yeah, 30 yeah, special. I'm, I'm I'm big on melody and harmonies and stuff like that. That shit, that drives me up. That drives me crazy. I love that kind of stuff. 
You know, I mean, I listen to all kinds of music and I just like, you know, a, a good melody and singing together is just great. I, I can hear at times the, um, even like Beatles type, uh, you know, Beach Boy harmonies in some songs. You had some songs that are kind of psychedelic and, you know, in nature a little bit with some of your, the riffs and the harmonies, which is really great yeah. to hear. Yeah, it's, it, that just works out. I mean, I, I sing with Charlie very well. I know, you know, how he's going to start something and end it and <clears throat> his feeling for it. I've been singing with him for years. So it's now it just comes, you know, <laughs> natural. But was that uh, the, the like, magic moment for you guys? I'm sorry. Was that the magic moment when you guys first started singing together to end playing? <clears throat> kind of, yeah. It just, I, it's it, it's so, I don't mean to underplay it, but it just it just happened, you know? Because like I said, I was a singer before I was in Blackberry Smoke. So right. I, I, and I've heard him play a lot you know, back then before we were together, I just, I was just like, I know this will work. This is definitely, you know, you know, he and I could definitely make it happen. And, you know, it works out. Was it weird to just step back? I mean, you still do a lot of, you are very upfront in your vocals, but is it weird to not be just a lead vocalist in a band? Is it no. weird at first? No, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's a, that's a lot of pressure, pressure. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, it's, it's, they don't understand it being a lead singer is a lot of, a lot of pressure. You kind of got to be the ringleader most of the time. Cause you know, when I was doing my thing, I was, I was playing with my brother and another bass player. And we had a great time, but just, you know, sitting down writing the song list every night, it drove me insane. I was like, Hey, hey, hey. you know, it's just, you know, it, it is a lot of pressure to be put on somebody, you know, and Charlie handles it. Well, he does it great. Well, like, yeah, well, I, I don't think, even. Go ahead. Like, well, I'm gonna say I agree. I think I think he's fantastic. I think it's hard because I think the weight of it is like all you guys can play your instruments. If you have a runny nose, you can still play guitar. You know? Right. So but you have with, to feel how your voice is doing, and and then what's the temperature? You guys are from down south. What's is it yeah. dry? Is it humid? Are you a new it's area? Hu it's humid. Yes, yeah. it's, it's nasty humid in Georgia. So I'm saying, but vocally, those, these are all challenges. That the singer's going, yeah. what's he going into? I mean, is it going to a cold climate, a higher altitude? Is your, yes, your breath, are, is your diaphragm? I mean, those are all things that have to be taken into you know, consideration. A lot of, yeah, well, some people don't. They just, you know, you get on stage and, you know, well, the, <laughs> the audience may expect you to be perfect at every time. But, it, you know, we travel a lot and it's, it can get, you know, a little rough on your, you know, like you just said, your vocal cords and stuff. I mean, it, it, um, especially when, 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 if I were to get a little sick or something, my range is, is so up there most of the time, my voice takes a toll, it takes a toll on my voice. So, and I, I, I get very, I shouldn't say depressed, but super bummed that I can't give my hundred percent when I'm not feeling well, but that's very rare that that happens, but. Do you practice that I'm, though? That I'm sick. When you're not sick, like during COVID and stuff, do you kind of work your voice? Well, I laid off of it for a while because I was just, you know, when I <laughs> when we got sent home from Canada a few years back, I I was just sitting at home. And I was just like, you know what? I'm a little burnt out. But now's yeah. my time to just take it easy. And and then when we got back to you know, got back together, we like it was weird being home for, you know, sometimes two months or three months at a time yeah. because I haven't been off more than two weeks for we've been together for 20 years, maybe, maybe 30 years. Cause I've been always playing. It was just weird to be weird to be in one place for so long, <laughs> but I don't, but I, I didn't practice a lot. I, you know, was saying with my kids, you know, karaoke and sat around, but other than that, no, I, I can't imagine the, the different. First off, I, I say a couple of thoughts. Whenever I talk to artists from, from doing this COVID, I started this during COVID because, well, I wanted to promote artists I liked, encourage people right. to check out the check out the sites that are around. We get these conversations going. They're not touring. Go to their sites. I was the link underneath it. Buy their merch. Help keep the musicians going. That was kind of the gist. Appreciate of this. that. 
It's awesome. Oh, you guys are great. And, 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 and uh, uh, thank you. So, so, but, but what was really cool is when I talk to people, they can always go back. I always think the great idea if the, the best book would be like, where were you when COVID hit? And I, I mean, it first started, the show started with Doodles that, but he can tell me exactly the first show, like where you were when you got closed down before the gig, after the gig, when you had to pack it up. Like every member is that day of the last day of the tour yeah. of COVID. I mean, that could be like a big book. Each band could have a page and they could talk about it with a shot or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know coffee table books. Like where were yeah. you when that happened? Because it was such a monumental I remember, thing. I remember we were in Canada and, and forgive me, I can't remember the exact place we were at this moment, but I remember we did two shows. I believe it was two shows and I could just feel something in the air. And I told, I told everybody, so we should, the, the um, runner that was running Brandon and I to the hotel, she goes, I'll be surprised if they don't shut this gig down tonight. Cause it was, it, wow. it, you can feel it in the air. Well, um, our manager called and said, do you guys want to come home? And then um, everybody, then Charlie goes, Every, everybody wants to stay, but Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, then we're setting up for the next gig and it was just, it, it, it was eerie. There wasn't hardly anybody on the street. And then we they set all the PA the gear up and we were about to sound check and our manager calls and Britt and I were upstairs in the dressing room calls and said y'all need to pack up and be at the airport within four hours. Wow. And then I looked at Britt and I was like, told you, <laughs> you know. But it was it kind of sucked because we were really looking forward to touring Canada at the time, but we finally got to go back and do it. So. A couple of things actually. So the first thing is like to tour that much and and your father and your husband and stuff. The challenges and then being home a lot. It's got to be the dynamic yeah, of just that, changing and being like a tour guy. I mean, I can tell I, some people are like you're never home, and then like I see the spouses or whatever, and then after they're home for like about six months, first time they're like, man, I get it. Yeah. You should go on the you should go on the road. <laughs> it works out you know, this if, is if, if mom's taking I, care of things or or the opposite, whoever's on the spouse is traveling. I got. I got some good things. I, I mean, some things I can tell you about yeah. COVID. So th- I'll I'll try to make it quick. You know, so uh-huh. but, um, when we when we got when we got home from um, from Canada, you know, I was home for like maybe the the first month. I was like, man, this is I couldn't believe it. I was sitting out on my you know on the bricks of my fire pit, you know, having a beer, just hearing the birds for the like it seemed like for the first time ever. Yep, you know because. And then like that was the first month. The second month came around and I was like, I was like, man, this is killer. But we're gonna play soon. I just have a feeling we are. The third month came around and I just started to panic. Like, oh my God, they're gonna close every club venue down and nothing's ever gonna open. I started to get freaked out. Oh, and no. then then they I mean, I was panicking. And then they started opening up like um it was a drive through, uh, not drive through, yeah. drive through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was the weirdest ever. And then they started putting people in pods. Yeah. You know, like they wrote people off to where they couldn't talk. And I'm just, that's when I was like, all right, this is kind of too much. Silly. Yeah, it's kind of silly. But we eventually got back at it. And then we, um, and we went out and did the, uh, the, um, Oh my God, the Taurus! Shame on me for that. Um, All right, here they'll blur together. Anyway, for you. The, yeah, it's, it, it it's a lot. It'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, we were out on the road with Almond Betts and playing with them. We were having so much fun, and we got down to Jacksonville, Florida. The place is, you know, the place is ready to go. Almond Betts got done; they killed it. And then we were about to go on, and I had asked for a thermometer earlier that day just to check myself well um they got wind of it i don't know if the venue or live nation got wind of it that i had a a thermometer and then they made me take a covid test and i was positive right before about to walk out on stage and charlie called me and asked me do you mind if we go on and do the do the show you know (gasps) without you and i said absolutely go out there i don't want to disappoint people and then they called our tour manager and said get out (laughs) They had to tear everything down. I was so embarrassed. I was wow because people, yeah, people were waiting and and I don't know. I just felt bad. But then I got home and here goes. uh, I got home and my wife put me in my basement. I was down there for fourteen days and then I ended up staying down there (laughs) for six for six months. 
squat. Because so, <laughs> I, I had everything I needed down there. My, you know, there's a, a full bath and shower down there, yep. a movie theater, a bar. My vinyls were down there. My guitar gear was down there. So I my just stayed down, down there for, yeah. four months, for six months. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> like pretending you were on tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, you know. I did a I did a couple things, you know, uh, for friends over in Europe and stuff. And it was, you know, recording and it was, you know, I was occupied. And then we did some of those um, jam at home things. Yeah. Blackberry Smoke did. Yeah. Which was pretty interesting. It's like I miss being around the guys. It's so weird being so far away on video and playing a song. Well, the dynamic is some people are like they could do recording and then they got better at it. It forced some people to focus to do other things. On recording, yeah. till it, it it really it was really interesting. Some people, like I said, that were home for the first time. Some bands have written some of the best albums they've done since like their first and second albums. Cause they've actually had the time without being forced on the road. You know? Oh my God! Yes, totally. There's a killer album oh, came totally. out in the past year. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's you're home and you yeah. have you know, like you just said you got time to focus and and not not just be in a rush to get something together. Yeah. You know, you can write until it feels that, good. Yeah. You know, and that was great. I, yeah. What I always think about is, 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 um, I used to work nights for like 20 years, right? Second shift. Yeah. I do, I do tech stuff. Yeah. And, um, and my wife would work the split shift, but with three kids, you were kind of like, the, kind of like a high five thing and be home two days a week and, and parenting with two different ways. Yeah. Different schedules is always very weird. So to me, the first thing I yeah. thought of when I thought of all these people coming back from tour with families is like, oh boy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, you, got my... two, you got two alphas coming in at the same time, like more than a nice, more than a, like a honeymoon period before you're back on the road. And I was like, yeah. oh god. <laughs> my wife, my wife Amanda, she is definitely the, the you know the boss and ringleader of our home, you know, and. uh she always has these, you know, puts my name in some weird sayings. Like after after I was there for for so long, she was like, "I'm getting very claustrophobic. <laughs> you need to go back out on the road." <laughs> that is awesome! Like, she, yeah, she see, she's so brilliant at that. That is really really good. My friend do the things like if I take a, um, I always try to take a shortcut, but always every like travel would always be like out of the way, like even longer, so it would become a Sean. Uh, so like oh, yeah, <laughs> are we taking a Sean cut? It means it's going to be yeah. especially longer than what we we're going to be supposed to be doing. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you're traveling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm got to go this way. Got, it's a Sean cut. I got um, uh, posterophobic. She says I'm. She says I'm passive aggressive, <laughs> and uh, and because I am, I'm, I'm a little. I could be passive aggressive, but in my own way. That's pretty know, funny though. But it's, it's the just, dynamic. It's, just, it's pretty funny though, because you gotta own yeah. it. But, but that, that's the thing is you gotta own it. Like I said, you know, my wife definitely runs the house, and it's, she's way better than I am. If you do like the two human beings, she's way better of a human being than I am. Like she's way better of a right. parent. She's like way better of a human being. <laughs> you know. Put it put it this way: when when I was home, uh, my wife uh, she drinks Chardonnay. When I was home, the stock in Chardonnay just went up. <laughs> <laughs> but, it went I mean, way up. It must have been good though, because I, I did see you had some videos of your, 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 your some stuff with your kid, and your, you know, it seems like a lot of fun. He seems like a lot, uh, yeah, a fun yeah. energy. Yeah, he's um my oldest boy. He's out here with us, uh, touring with us, and assistant tour managing and stuff. And that's awesome. He's yeah, he's doing nineteen years old and killing it. Just, just you know, he wants you know, music is his first and foremost to yeah. him. So, but perfect. he was like, Dad, I'm. I can't find a, a band right now, and I'd rather be around music. So, well, he's gonna know, learn so much. We're like, you know. Oh yeah, he's he's gonna he learn knows what. Too, put it this way. Too, yeah, yeah. He he knows he knows what uh, after coming out with us, he knows what not to do. <laughs> no, no, but, no, but but also he's gonna know like even if he decides to change his his mind, right? But as a parent, right. the stuff he's gonna learn. I mean, this isn't like Led Zeppelin and the Mud Shark, and we're going through like those days in the seventies. We're like, you're touring hard. You guys are hard working band. I mean, that's your. You guys are legendary. You're hard working. So it. So you guys have a great reputation, which means you guys are putting down every night, tear down, set up, following the rules. You guys are ag aggressively working, and and so to have that reputation, your team has to be that way. 
So he's going to learn how to work with people, work oh, in yeah. different, different situations. Kind of like when you're in like, the army, the military. When you get done doing this, everything else is going to seem like everyone's a bunch of crybabies because you're going to be able to handle stuff Ex- in a different way. Exactly. It's going to be if, – if he decides to – you know, when he goes out on his own tour or whatever, or he decides to go out working with somebody else, he's going to realize that what he's, you know, it's way easier than dealing with this because we are constantly going and going. But and he's going. going to know what he wants, though, too. He might have a high, he might be like, oh, God, this guy is just so tough on us. Like his level, what he expects might be high coming out of the gate now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, you know, it, I, I was raised hard, you know, like my, my old man, he was, you know, strict, but fair as can be, yeah. you know, and that's what I try to do with him. But out here, he's on his own, you know, he's 19, he, he gets on point. Yeah, you know, he don't have to 19. just worry about him. Yeah, he doesn't just have to worry about me. He's got to worry about how many people out here, 15 people. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's really it's, good. It's, and I get to see him every day, so which I didn't when he was little. So he's out here with us, and it's it's comforting to me to get to see my it, son every day. It's very interesting because you, you notice. I'm sure you've seen this over because, like, you saw with like the the you know you're, you're touring with the uh, Alma Bats and like those guys. These are the second generation musicians, and then they were touring. And but right. at one point, these guys are touring with them, or like even like. Um, you know, Barry Gibbs, son Stephen Gibbs, tours with them. Like a lot of family members, we're, this is the next generation of their kids are musicians. Yeah. They're now touring with them, and they're, and they're good musicians yeah. too. It's not like not like they're like you just your daddy's bringing them along because you got to be good to be with these guys, and they're going to have a standard that's going to be up there no matter who you are. You know, right, right, right. It's you know, each it, everybody has their own indiv- individuality. I'm sorry, so that um, you know, everybody has their own thing going but um it, it's <laughs> you know i tell spencer i said um well you know you've been around me and you know you listen to music a lot so it should come fairly you have a good start at it a, a good you know you've just been around it. you know a little bit more about it than the average person right. picking up a guitar that doesn't have a family member in music you know what i'm saying so I would just, you know, I tell him to take advantage of it every second you can when he's not out here because he's always busy. Pick, pick up your guitar and, um, you know, um, and just play every day, you know, and, and write songs and stuff. So, Are you still playing as much as you used to? Who's Spencer? No, you actually. That makes me think about you though. Uh, when you're younger now – to the point of like when you were younger, you probably played a lot. Are you still picking up as much? Oh yeah, yeah. When I'm at home, I, I try to learn different things that that uh that I normally wouldn't learn. You know what I'm saying? That we yeah. we don't play. I you know if I hear something and I just go, oh man, I want to adapt that to the guitar, or you know yeah. I'll hear a bass, you know. Like when I was in COVID, I learned off the wall on bass. For some reason, I just was listening to it on vinyl. My, Michael Jackson's off the wall. And I was yeah. like, that is a great bass line. So I just figured I'd learn sit it. at home and learn it. Yeah, just Well, just that's fun. inspiring to hear. Because yeah. I, mean, I, I say that because like when I watch you play, I've watched you like live stuff, whatever. I haven't seen you yet. Actually, you're coming close close by. You're coming to Torrington. So you'll finally be close, oh, nice. close enough for me to check you out in a couple months. But when I've seen you, oh, pre- feels- pressure's on. Yeah, pressure's on, right? Uh, I, was, I was going to make a, a pun, but I can't think of a pun. I'll, I'll, I'll call a pun. I'll have to think of one for you. Um, yeah. But, but <laughs> the point is, like, I don't feel like you. Sometimes when you play, I watch you play, and your styles are you. It feels like it. You it varies from the song. Like sometimes you're really just digging in, but sometimes right. you're really gentle. It feels like you don't have like some. You know what I'm saying? Like some musicians, you'll be like, God, it, it sounds so heavy. And, and and they have like the lightest strings or something like 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 we like a ZZ Top or, or even Hill, you know, but it feels like they're digging in. But you feel like sometimes for you alternate almost. It feels like to me between your playing style, depending on the song. Yeah. Well, it's it's playing it. The sometimes I was telling uh, my son the other day. It's sometimes when I pick, 
I'll use my pick. And sometimes when I'm playing songs, I'll use maybe a finger to strum or I'll strum up yeah. with the soft part of my finger. Sometimes I do that, you know, and I don't know if it's because we have um, three guitar players in the band or it's just my mood might be a little different or if if I'm cracking up too much, you know, because most of the time I'm smiling at people that are smiling back. I can't help it. It's my nerves. I just, you know, it's, it's go, it varies every day. Play, it's a good play, thing, play. actually, because it's kind of like your style. Like, I know it's, it, it's, it's a texture. It's, it's great because I'm like, to me, it always felt like you're playing. And one of my favorite sayings is, are you, are you serving the song? Like, that's why I have so many different types of artists right. on the show. It's like, I think all different, whatever. Because the truth is, right. a good song is just a good song. And are you serving the song? Like, and some of the problems I have, some songs, like you over, like when they oversing it, just because they can do the notes, or you overplay <laughs> yeah, the yeah, guitar yeah, solo. Yeah. I mean, there's some great guitar players, but I'm like, I can't listen to their albums because it's like a big solo. Um, yeah. It's a vocalist, but I'm like, you're a fantastic singer, but you don't have to hit that note for like 45 seconds. At 45 seconds, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's right. good. I will always love you when the Dolly Parton song it's good. You just do it once and you move on. Like you don't always need to do it. Yeah. So, so to yeah. that point, I mean, I, it feels like you're always playing and it feels like a lot of band though. And you, a lot, you guys are really a singer songwriter band. And that's something that I enjoy about it. Cause you got the riffs, but the riffs don't overtake the melody or the content of the song. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the, it's the, the, I, I, Blame it on the the era that we grew up in. It's because there were songwriters back then. I mean, it, well, they just the melodies help. I'm telling you, my mother told me something when I started playing, and uh, she was like, "Be good enough to overplay, but smart enough not to." And my mother's not a musician. That's wow. she told me that, and then. Um, then she told me, she goes, we were, when we were writing some of the first stuff we I've written with my brother and the other guys that were playing with way back then, um, you know, we were, we were trying to write all this weird, difficult, you know, just stuff because we wanted yeah. all the notes in there. And she just, I remember her sitting us down at the bar in the house back in Pensacola. And she's like, she was, listen, I wanted to tell you this and always listen to this. Simplicity sells. People's ears, they don't have your ears. You 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 want to make it easy on the ears and yeah. something memorable. So she's like, make it simple and feel it simple. Don't just but that's go out the there, hardest you know? thing ever, though. You know what I mean? That's the hardest thing is. ever. That's what the Beatles said. You're like, that is so simple. You're like, okay, write that then. Well, first off, the Beatles yeah. wrote almost every every song anyhow, pretty much for the Beatles and Stones and Zeppelin. Kind of everything's been covered at this point. Right, but, right, 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 right. <laughs> but on a serious note, I mean, to write a simple melody, I mean, and, and for people that are listening that may be not so familiar with all your tunes, I'm not going to go deep like a dork, but we could say right. like a more popular, like, like like One Horse Town. Yeah. What a great melody. Cause that's probably yeah. one of the more popular song. It got a very, the riff, small riff, but it's, you know it. It's great. Yeah. It's fun. Um. And that's what you want as a, as a songwriter, as a single, to be like, and the melody is just there. It's got, a, got the perfect story. It's not overspoken. It's not underdone. It's yeah. perfect, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it speaks to people. They, they can understand it. They can wrap their head around it. They're, it's not too complicated. And, right. You know, because there's a, there's a lot of bands out there that are, are, are amazing. And mm-hmm. I get it. You may get it, but the average person probably can't wrap their head around it. Oh yeah, I listen to a lot of bands that people don't generally listen to. And sometimes they put them on here, and people are like, "What?" <laughs> right, right. And it's just, it, and and it's a drag because they're phenomenal bands. Yeah, you know, and, but they're those those. I look at those bands are more for people like like us, you know, people yeah. that understand. But like, I don't know. I I just always felt like that you know like a but very there are complicated two, band no there, there's two levels you're right and i think but like i said but we want to say like one hour sound even if you didn't have the story like say you take out the lyrics of the song right the melody yeah, and the yeah. pieces it's very great. cohesive it, it, it's 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 got a great catchy melody you know it's mm-hmm. got a great riffs and then lots of good harmonies in it then you can do it acoustically stripped down which you guys recently released some a demo stripped down version of it um 
And yeah. there's a nice story, but then there's also a relatable story. It literally, like if you had a songwriting class, like they talk to people about perfect songs, that song would be part of the curriculum. You know what I mean? As in, this is kind of what a good song is, you know? Right. Because, right. you know, but you have a lot of songs like that, but that's probably just one I think more people would know listening or watching us than. <laughs> right, right, right. They'll, they'll people, understand. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But, but people check out all the songs. I mean, they're all like this. You hear the songs, you're like, oh, you know, you're the kind of band where I can listen to the first time, listen to the album, and I'm, I'm pretty much into it. Like sometimes you have to hear the album a couple of times, you're going, I'm not getting it yet. I love the band. I know it's going to, I'm going to get it. Sometimes I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your brain isn't focusing on everything. But yeah. you do the first time through by the end of each song in it, I'm like, I'm in it. Like it just, and that's got to do with the the, the, the songwriting in this band, you know, that's, that's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, we, we, it's, it, it, we could just put it together. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. It just, I, I get it. And just, I'm just kind of put it out there as it's kind of <laughs> acknowledging it. It's, it's such a great thing. And it's something, it's important for me to talk about it aloud because you guys aren't going to say it, but I'll say it as a fan that, especially because there's a lot of bands and I'm not knocking any bands because we already know they are, are not doing live music and are doing tracks and this and that. And tracks are a background effect is one thing because you can't bring an orchestra, but you're not. Right. But have a, a, a band that goes out there live every night whether they, you're going to hit a different note, they're going to do something different, they're going to be live, they're going to be sick, they're not going to be sick, they're going to have a higher note, a better note, a different note, a different version. Right. You guys do some great live stuff. That's what people need to go see because that's not something you see yeah. all the time anymore. Those that's gone, you know. That's Maybe that's twenty percent of the band. Yeah, it's kind of depressing in a way. You know, you're just like, oh man, because you know the, the first, cats can play. Well, they just, some of them, yeah. In the beginning, it was like you'd hear like generationally, like, oh, this band couldn't do this um, because they didn't have their laptop, they couldn't perform. You're like, what? Right. What the set list yeah. was on it? Like what was on it? You couldn't play that part. Your, your music was on the computer. Come on. Then, yeah. But that's just because that's the kind of music I like. I mean, I can't. If it's some kind of music that you can play, then you're a DJ at a at a wedding or a bar mitzvah, and that's great. If you have to play on your computer, that's a good gig. But right, right. <laughs> if you're a musician, that means there's like instruments and in, in your voice, and, and you you can re reproduce it live to the best of your ability. Yeah. And now, unfortunately, yeah, some musicians that were known to play. <laughs> aren't even playing anymore that's that's the whole that's the fun of it to me is recording something and then trying to do it live it's you know yeah. I, I love that part of it we let's 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 do what we recorded it's just and a lot of things sound better live i mean actually i think you guys actually have been good and that's one thing we talk about is so like two things with this is so a you guys out of the gate were very independent re releasing your own stuff which is brilliant you know, carving your own path. Mm -hmm. And hard right, right. ones every time to get, and you guys have got a billion, you know, getting number one albums and stuff, but you guys have total control of your own music from the very beginning. But you don't, yeah, you that's something sound we... too. Re recording. Yeah. Like you guys sound good recorded, or some bands you're like, you know, like Frampton, like I didn't, he didn't hit until Frampton comes alive because it didn't, finally they caught what he sounded like. The but, audience caught up to him. Yeah. But... Like you guys sound good on vinyl too. I'm a vinyl guy too. You guys sound good, or yeah. on CD. You know what I'm saying? Those are two things you guys got right that's, out of the gate. That's that's once again. That's just I, what we learned from, or we took as learning growing up. Back when we did and listening to music and understanding that's how it's done. This is a, this is a, you're supposed to do this. This is what you, all the other bands you listened grew up listening to did. It's supposed to be this way. So that's what we, I guess, learned, you know, well, it from shows, band. I mean, it yeah, I mean, I just, too. yeah, it, it, it's just, it's normal. That's the normalcy to me. And, and it, it's just do it, playing it, putting it on the record and playing it live. That's what I would want to go see in a band. I, I wouldn't right. want to go see, a band, like you just said, a band come out and and, and not play, if that makes sense. You know, it is, and it's hard because I look at things like, I'm like, I get a band, like if they want to just do certain songs or certain stylists, I'm like, I get that, it's their gig or whatever. But as a fan, I also welcome the fact, I'm like, yeah. you could do songs that aren't your hits. I remember the first time I saw the Black Crows yeah. and they didn't do, and they didn't do any hits. And everybody right. lost it. I was like, these are all songs I don't have, I, don't, I haven't heard before. This is cool. 
like me and like two yeah. other people. Everyone else is like, what? No, she talks angels. Now they have good songs. And this was back, probably the Tabernacle or something where you did a live album. Like back then, where you're like, they're just not, they're trying to avoid that to just do songs to play without being yeah. a single man. We kind of take the approach of what, you know, we, t- we, we've toured with some great bands, some of our heroes, you know, just everybody's been so nice and cool and great. And um, we kind of take the approach of what Billy Gibbons, you know, told us, you know, we try to switch it up, but if we have to play certain songs or we'll, get, or they will hang us. <laughs> yes. So, so we, we, we play certain songs, but for the most part, we don't, we don't play the same set list every night. It's just, I don't even look at the set list until I probably go on stage and I'm standing there. Okay, we're doing this one. You know, is that's the, you know, that's one of uh, Charlie's daunting tasks, I believe. It's like it's he's good at it. He'll write a set like say if we go to Chicago and we we play there, we played there a year or two ago. He'll keep the set list in his, you know, in his uh, laptop or wherever he puts it. And then we'll go back to Chicago and we will not play those songs. You know what I'm saying? He'll go oh, back and awesome. leave the set. Let's go. That's really awesome. We did this. We did this this year. Let's not do that. Let's do this. And, wow. You know, and with, the, him. with the ex- Yeah, with, with the c- exception of a few we have to do. Oh, right, right, right. We, I think we nowadays you can go online track. too. There's a website to actually track all the songs you guys have done. Right, right, right. You know, and I think maybe that's something I should look into because I'm – yeah, I'm sure my stuff is our stuff is on there, so I probably shouldn't look into that. There is, it's like, it's like, it's like so, I want to promote somebody with like, like a song FM or something. Type in like set, set list, type in Blackberry's set, set list, and it'll be like one of the first ones that yeah, pop no, up. And they'll tell you, they'll yeah. tell you how many times you played One Horse Town, how many times you played this. And some of them are really right. up to date, and you're like, holy smokes. Um, yeah. Might be well, one, horse is def- one Horse is definitely something we do every night, good one, and, you know, sleeping dogs, stuff like that. And, we have to do certain ones, but uh, for the most part, we play two hours so we can cram a bunch in. So we just mix well, it that's up. That's going to be a lot, so, you know, to do that. Yeah, it's, 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 but you're not choreographed, though. You don't have lights to worry about. Some bands have to lock in their songs or tour because there's a, it's, you know, because and that's and that's because that's the kind of music it is. It's not a bad thing. Right. Because when, when I'm in the mood, I listen to that because there's a lot of that music but they've got a show with it, whether it's a background or they have a story and it's a whole production. That's part yeah, of it. Yeah, it has to are. be set. Right. Yeah, and I get be that and because it's tied into something. So I get that. Now, if it's the same band right. and I've seen them three or four times and they don't have a production tied into that, it's just literally the right. same set. It feels kind yeah. of lazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't, I get that if you don't have that, that's a, right. that'd be, that would be some good advice for, for young artists and, people that don't have a giant stage production um, switch your set up every night. Don't just be complacent with it. You know, cause that way, that way, like you said, there's no pyro going off. There's no, you know, you don't have to stand here and stand here, you know, oh, totally. And yeah, yeah. Just, that would be my only, my only pet peeve with any band that plays live. I remember I, there were times I go see some bands a bunch of times and I would actually know the talk between the songs. It was so much. I'm like, all right, I can't come back again. I love the band, but the fact that yeah. the singer, actually has the same banter. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'm not yeah. just watching, back then I was just watching VHS tape. That's how old I am, get off my lawn. You know, <laughs> but, but but to that point, like you can at least talk and do stuff. And, and that's why it's good yeah. to celebrate bands like you guys and, and, and all the bands and, and, you know, and all the other artists out there that are still doing that. Yeah. Know? It's important. Yeah, we're, 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 it's just, like I said, once again, the, the normalcy of it to me. That's, it is. That's, I, I it, guess I'd be ha- remiss. I mean, it happens. To not ask, is how is everybody's health? How is, how, is, how is everybody's health in the band? We've had some health scares. Is everybody feeling better? Yeah, yeah everybody's good. Uh, Britt's doing amazing. He's just crushing it every night, you know. And, yeah. You know, he's taking you care of himself. You got to wrap him in bubble wrap. Wrap him in you, bubble wrap for us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and he's doing his treatment, his treatments and stuff. He's just, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, I, I, it's, he's, I just don't, I, I don't notice because he's still killing. He's just killing yeah. it, dude. It just, it's Brit, man. It's Brit. He's, he's tough. I know when you hear that, it was, it was horrifying yeah. at the time. I'm sure it's worse for you guys. But yeah, right. Because you guys are, because when you listen to a band and a certain band, you like a band, it feels like, you know, 
you grew up listening like a 30 special or Skinner and something, you know, a <laughs> Skinner's a bad example of something happening, but, 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 but like, you know, I'm saying if a member of a band getting really sick, you're like, Oh my God, like, you know, the band's family, you know, the, and you know what it's like. So in, in being in the bands, you know what it's like, the, 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 the way everything's kind of connected. So the right. energy. Right. It's, yeah. It's, it's crazy. You know, see him better. You know, see him better. Yeah, it's fantastic. It, you know, just as a person. Oh man. He, it's, he's like I said, he's just, he's tough and super determined and a workaholic and, and a you know, he's a drummer. He is thunder. I, he is thunder. Oh. oh my God, dude. I've, I've said this a million times and I'll always say it. it, it there literally would be no Black Mary Smoke without Britt Turner um, keeping us together most of the time. Not, not as, not as, you know, not, not arguing and fighting, just, just like, no, my fellas. You need a leader. I think, I think, you need an unspoken, I think, every, but I think yeah. everything needs an unspoken leader. Every family needs an unspoken leader. You yeah. can't have, it's like being at home, you can't have two alphas. You can have, an alpha and then an alpha part two, but you still have, to have somebody who's really going to be the one who's ultimately going to say, "All yeah, right, you need, to, we, you need to leave." What? Right, right, right. I look at I, I never really look at it as, as alphas. I just look at it, you know like you're you're you just having when we were doing dumb stuff. <laughs> I like to use the word. Like, I use the word. I it conscious. sounds so silly, right? Well, that's the thing. I like to use the word because to me, it actually, it's kind of not sarcastic, but it's funny because you do need some kind of leader. Because you know, because we're in the world of alphas and wolves and this and that. But to me, it's funny to say the word. The truth is, you do need somebody yeah. who's going to be the good angel, you know, or, or whatever. The voice say, hey, of reason. The yeah. voice of reason. Yeah, so. you, you need really one grown up in every gathering. <laughs> one real grown up. Yeah. <laughs> Because you know, back in the day, Charlie, Charlie and I could got we we could get silly real quick, you know. <laughs> it's what's like, the point of being in a band? Was, we got to leave. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. But that was, yeah, we're we're older now and a little bit I, more subdued. You know, I just have so. two of the uh, two things I just want to talk about because you guys are on the road and and with COVID, you guys weren't allowed to do as obviously playing out, but you guys did some releases. So, uh, you hear Georgia came out, which is a brilliant, great right. album. And then you oh, get, thanks. then you guys did, well, you, you're welcome. It's, it's so many good songs. I mean, and like, I see Hey Delilah, Live It Down. Warren Hayes, come on. How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, my uh, God, right? One uh, of the best musicians in the world. Warren Hayes, right? Laying it sweet, down. Sweetheart of a dude. Yeah, man. Just sweetheart of a dude. I, I That whole band of his, that whole oh. organization, they're just great people, man. It's just fun to be around, hilarious to talk to, and, you know, and uh, I always looked at it like this way. When we were up there jamming with uh, Mule, like Charlie and I would get up. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, Warren, is such a um, a gentleman. <laughs> he, he um, how do I say it? Uh, he won't m make you, he doesn't, like, outshine you. You know what I mean? He plays That's accordingly. Yeah. You know what I'm when saying? he plays the sun, that, all the sun comes down on him. <laughs> he doesn't leave you in the shade. He, he, he holds back on some of that sunshine. Yeah, he holds. He, yeah, he holds. Back, you know, because he's like, clearly, I'm not half the guitar player. Period. That he's a team he player, though. He's toes. a gentleman. And you know, he's a team he's, player. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he was. He was sweet about that, and I was like, I mean, I, mo and, and most of the time, I'm usually staring at him when we were play jamming. I was just looking at him, <laughs> going, "Oh, like I'm, play, like, right. I'm still in the audience." You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm up in the audience, but I'm on stage. Yeah, he's great, man. You know, Matt was great. They're just cool people, man. It's a great, it's, it's a great song. The whole album's great. I want to recommend it to people, obviously, all the stuff. I mean, yeah. which one of the things I do like to do a lot is I'll put like a band and I'll put it in a playlist and I just hit shuffle. And that's how you can tell the metal, not metal, metal, but you can tell of a band right. if you can shuffle it and you get a lot yeah. of home runs every time. Now, first off, song, song layering in, in order of an album is very important to me. But right, if you can have a good song or but if you can shuffle it, a lot of times it really works out. That's just you know even better. And and right. you guys are one yeah. of the bands. You guys can be on shuffle with all your albums, and it all just kind of works oh, that's out cool. really well. You know, it doesn't sound like whoa, that's a weird album. You because know, there's some bands that have phases. So you're like, oh, different producer, different sound. Like all your albums are consistently sounding good. You guys had your sound out of the gate. As I was saying earlier. 
So the production's always been yeah. locked in. Um, right. You know, you guys doing your own music was something that everyone's doing now. You guys were kind of ahead of the curve on that one. But now you have everything together. Thing, yeah. and you guys were ahead of the curve on, on actually doing a lot of your own stuff, though, in-house. Like doing oh, right, 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 right. COVID has kind of made everybody realize right. that we need to do a lot of our own stuff. We never, we never had a um, when we were part of any record company or anything. We didn't, we never had that issue. Nobody told us what we should or shouldn't do. We just did it, and right. I don't. Uh, that I, I don't think anybody would have messed with us anyway about it because they can see in our faces we wouldn't budge anyway. <laughs> we're right. Like, ah, we're gonna do this. Well, it's better we're to be in control, that. you know. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah. Because you guys didn't have enough songs, you haven't toured, and it's hard enough for for Charlie to write a set list. Then you guys do an album like here, Georgia, and it's still getting out with the, the you know guys have some dates to make up, probably from other album that stopped during COVID. Right. So people hear that album. Then you do another really good album. I know you guys was a live one, but then on top of that, as you're going to go out and tour, you have this set of songs to throw into the bunch. Then you guys do a, a, a Stoned. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just to add that to was, it, um... some really good covers. That's a really fun album. That album was cut straight through. Like we didn't, we didn't uh, change guitars. We didn't change amps. We, it. we started it all the way through, and they recorded it. it right feels there like a spot. jam. So to hear that it's authentic makes my heart warm because it feels like well, yeah, it, 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 you're in a room and it's kind of smoky and it's like you know loud and it's like it's a jam. Yeah, I listened to some. I listened to some of my uh, uh, what we call mistakes. It's just I wasn't sure and my guitar drop out for a second come back but i'm like hell the stones would have done it that way anyway you know they wouldn't have went back and punched no. over that anyway because he only just, has like what three strings sh- anyhow you probably didn't have those strings yeah. wrong he has three strings i think right yeah three two or four that was i don't even know at this point that was a that was that was a fun kind of semi-frustrating process of recording that because you're you know you're recording but you don't want to mess up but once we started playing i was i I forgot that we were actually recording. I, we were just, I just started playing, you know. But you have your own that sound to it, though. And that, that's what yeah. the idea of being a band that just plays so much. You can do yeah. something that you that you love and it shows. Yeah. And it's not worrying about like doing, I mean, doing a song against honor is kind of a silly thing, but to do a song and redo it exactly or to not really, to do it because you think it was popular, not because it's a favorite song, is really the only crime. Right. To do it because you feel like it's a, right. you have to do it. If you love a song, yeah. anybody should do a song because you love it. Right. But, but you guys are a good jam band. Right. That's They're, a great band from the 70s to do. Those were some great songs, you know. Yeah, we first when we first got wind that we were going to be able to do it. At first I was like, how are we going to pull this off? And then and then um it, we get, we got together and you know, we had played individually these songs for years growing up anyway, but when we we got together to do it. It was like, oh, okay, this, I, I get what's going on. It it just, it rolled right off there. It was pretty cool. It was a great experience. Well, now you got more songs to put in your set list. Yeah, totally. Because you guys aren't adverse to doing some covers. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, to seeing you. In. Yeah, right. You guys are on tour now. People go to the website. The links will be underneath as usual. All the links <laughs> on the website and on the podcast. Check them out. Right. See them live. Check out the albums. They're all, they're all good. The newest one is you hear Georgia. Oh, Stone is really the newest one. And then you guys got some demos up there. You guys get kind of interesting throwing some single demos up there in the past year or so. Yeah. Kind of keeping it fun. We just, we just actually finished a record. So it's in the process of getting everything together. So we Are record we quick. We don't take, well, I mean, you guys we don't take tight. too long recording. So we'll do it. We'll do a record within 10 days. Easy. Or That's maybe good. eight days. Yeah. We just, um, and that's with never playing the songs together before. So it's just we just well, we just get it, you know. I guess, but um, uh, I think we're gonna try to. I'm hoping, me, um, I'm hoping to have it out by the end of the year or maybe the first of next year. You know, but there's a lot of a lot of things to do to put a record out. It's people. It's just not the recording, folks. It's it's artwork. Um trying to get the records pressed on vinyl that that's a major thing too, because materials are so yep. few and far between. A lot of people aren't know, doing so. that now that the, the vinyls are coming out after just to get the album out. Like if you could probably do it, if you guys are doing it, 
you should aim for Christmas to get the album out in time for and don't let the vinyl hold you up and do have the vinyl come out afterwards. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, but that's, we just, we like to drop everything all at, at once. once here over in the UK at the same day, same time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Instead of you, 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 we can get it here, but they can't get it over there for six months after you know and that's you know that's always been weird we just like to try to weird you know like they say yeah yeah, we just like to try to get it all together that's good that's good for the fans too um that's awesome i'm looking forward to the albums this is great i'm still you have so much material to listen to anyhow so it's not just a a loss for for music to hear we do i I keep forgetting i keep forgetting how many i keep forgetting how many records we actually Well, let me go. It's six albums. I just like stones, like, right? Oh, that's maybe. really an album. It's a jam album. It's Something a, like seven, yeah. But like six originals, and then this stone, yeah. and you have a bazillion mixtures out there in live, and you got a lot of stuff out there though. Depends on how you how you count it now, you know. Yeah. But your live yeah. albums are live, so yeah, we're looking forward good. to the new record coming out. So. Yeah, awesome. yeah, they're straight up live. That is for sure. That's no more. For uh, sure. No, nobody went in and 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 did some banter. And put it on the record. You know what I mean? Add, add, add the audience, record it, and then add the audience afterwards. The only live stuff is an audience. Yeah. Yeah. That was some of the – Yeah, totally. Fans. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I want, I want to thank you for being on the show. This is really, really awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Oh, thanks People, for having me, man. It's I'm great. to check you out. Thank you very much. 